Hello friends. So far in my channel, I have covered topics related to database administration, development, performance, and SSIS. We have seen various uh, topics on SSIS tutorials, and we have covered most of them. Starting this this series uh, uh, of video blogs will be dedicated to SSAS trainings. And so before we uh, get down uh, with the preliminary videos uh, uh, on SSAS, let's uh, let me try to set the territory of this uh, trainings so SSAs I mean uh, uh, so far the data from the uh, OLTP systems onto the OLAP systems is loaded from SSIS we have seen uh, various uh, videos on how to load the data from OLTP to OLAP uh, systems now what there is a there is a substantial different difference between these two systems but to briefly say that uh, OLTP is a is a highly normalized performance extensive uh, you know database where performance is the most important thing uh, which the modeler keeps in mind and hence the normalization occurs extensively while the oil lab systems is something which is a denormalized uh, system which is used for in any database analysis or data mining or, or extensive reportings so basically uh, to predict uh, a trend on the date uh, looking at the data is something which is done on the OLAP systems so it is a denormalized form of, of a database uh, so if we were uh, and we've used SSIS to load from OLTP system to a OLAP systems in various techniques uh, have already been covered now to start with uh, there are various books which help you uh, uh, elaborate uh, on so which you can reference on how a OLAP system is uh, that is something which will not be covered so in this topic in this uh, series of videos it is it is more of a developers uh, perspective that is kept in mind and, and that is what I'm going to cover on uh, so something which is already presumed is is you have a healthy OLAP uh, database already in place which is a data warehouse for you and SSIS has been pumping the data on this uh, dimension fact modeled uh, database now what is what do I mean by dimension fact modeled database so uh, as I said we would like to anal analyze the data predict some analysis uh, or, or, or a trend on the data now what do I mean by that so uh, what I mean is uh, considering a measure or, or something uh, a property which you would like to measure so for example this is a sales amount uh, so we would like to measure the sales amount from a table based upon few of the key key attributes so what do I mean by that I would like to know what is the sales amount between the year for the year 2005 on the weekends uh, that is Saturdays and Sundays for the black color uh, product of size 38 so this is something that I would want to know uh, and analyze upon so what, what was the maximum sales amount and, and total sales amount so this query helps helps us uh, dig that and it returns a value now as you can see the value from this uh, uh, we have we have done a join so the fact sales table internet table contains nothing but the factual information which we would like to which we would like to measure so so the important uh, property that needs to be measured is, is usually in the fact table so that's uh, important thing that you would like to keep in mind so facts table usually contains the important uh, properties that you want to measure like the total product cost sales amount freight charges uh, and the order quantity stuffs like that apart from that the other columns that are, are are simple references so what these columns reference actually is with the tables like date product so each of these table date product uh, are are uh, you know beginning with the uh, uh, dim so what does what does this dim say the dim means a dimension so we want to measure uh, the sales amount against a dimension we wanted to measure it against the year and the weekend day name so we simply joined this against the dim date how did we do that because we were able to do that because there is a, a, a due date key there is a date key for other date key which is which we can join with the dim date tables date key so we can do that and then we can retrieve the values also similarly what we have is a product we wanted to, to we wanted to know the color and the size 
uh, uh, the, for the sales amount so we have joined against the dim product dim products product key which is its primary key and we we have uh, joined it against the product key from the table fact internet internet sales so in true sense here as you can see so product key is having a foreign key reference so as you can see uh, the fact table will contain uh, the factual information and apart from that it will have foreign key references to uh, the dimension uh, that you want it to be joined again so tomorrow if you want uh, a new dimension to be added to the fact internet sales you would add a table onto the database a dimension table populate it with a key and then add one column to the fact internet sales uh, with the foreign key mapping that will add the dimension to the table so this is what your OLAP database would look like and, and this is how uh, so now you've seen uh, this query right so out of this query we have a criteria that we wanted to measure now say uh, I change the size and I want to get the maximum so there is uh, there is no value for this so and if I were to see the complete values I can do that as well so say I call it 38 again since we have some value so these are the these are the fact records which are returned so basically we have joined it against different dimensions now if uh, what we were to see for all the different colors uh, and their different sizes uh, based upon the date and uh, so querying it out is is, uh, is an extensive task now what if you have a, a UI to be able to dig drill that th through and then based upon the dimensions that you require you can generate reports too so that is what your SSAS is handy with so it it, it, it prepares a, a pre uh, configured or a pre-populated cached cube which you can drill down and, and get the data based upon the based upon various pr uh, dimensions that you have modeled your cube with so that is something your SSAS will help you with and, and going forth we would see the different ways uh, how we would develop the cube and how we would add the, the various dimensions and, and the measures and all the computations so based upon on that you can you can simply extract the data with the help of SSRS that is the reporting services or uh, simply you can use your excel sheets uh, to extract the data and generate the reports in, in various ways that you would want to so this is the first session so so having set the territory for you now let's try to start uh, preparing the solution to do that first of all go to your SQL Server Business Intelligence Studio and before that I would just want to say uh, we will be going uh, with the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse uh, database and we would be using this this is already fact uh, dimension modeled data warehouse and uh, let's also connect and, and show you the analysis services so this is a default instance you cannot have named instances so there's there will be only one default instance installed on your machine uh, so this is what your analysis services uh, will look like so the uh, once we are done with preparation of our cubes we will deploy it here so as you can see I already have one so it is having the data source data source views cubes dimensions uh, there so likewise once we are done with uh, once we uh, we have prepared uh, our, our devel uh, developed our cube we would be deploying it here on this on this server and uh, all the excel sheets or your SSRS can actually query upon this uh, with a language more known as MDX so that would be the query language we'll see that in due time for now just uh, this was a heads up to you guys and uh, let's go back to our development studio and uh, I say a new project and and then I use analysis services project let me call it this as demo and then ask it to create a solution directory so once the selection solution directory is uh, is, is uh, prepared a solution would appear and uh, we can see various folders so to start start with in this session we I would simply add the data source so just right click on your data source and say a new data source so as I said for this session we are using data warehouse 
adventure works uh, so just select the database or, or you can as well do a new so that's uh, and wherever it, it's installed so I just select this and say next it will ask for your user so so here if you uh, this is your data source DS so here you would want to specify a windows username and password or you can use a service account so uh, in, a, in a standard development environment it is advised that you can have a, a service account uh, used uh, if you have one or otherwise I use my current user credentials for now and I say next and I finish it so now if we go back this is what is your data source uh, which which will look like you will have a dot ds uh, file created and we have set the impersonation to use the current user account so that's that's the first session on uh, ssas uh, moving along we'll see how to, uh, in the next session how we'll prepare the data source view uh, so for now uh, this is the first uh, tone setting video which sets the uh, next series up and we'll look at the data source view in the next session Thank you friends. If you've liked it, please subscribe uh, to this channel. Thank you.